everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Wendy Yee. I'm Chris Yee. Today we're taking a look at a game called Terra Nova. That if you look at the board of it, and you might say that looks very similar to Terra Mystica. You this might is say that. This is Terra Mystica for babies, Tom. For babies! You took my joke away, but that's what I was going to say too. <laughs> so this is actually a different designer who designed a game based on Terra Mystica. And when we say based on Terra Mystica, it is like Terra Mystica for kids, but not kids, but it's definitely... Terra Mystica light. There's a lot of DNA in there. Yeah. It, in fact, I'm struggling to think of things that aren't in... It's basically Terra Mystica with fewer land types, a few of the side things kind of taken out, and more focused on the core, fewer resource types, basically. Chris is going to show you. Here's the setup for a game of Terra Nova. Players are trying to build out onto the central board on these hexes, taking their buildings and placing it out here to make a big ne uh, network of connected units, as well as trying to reveal more income as they build more things. There is also a round tracker. If you do whatever the bonus is for the round, you'll earn bonus points. At the end of each round, you flip this over, and at the end of five rounds, whoever has the most points will be the winner of the game. Every player also has an individual faction board over here, which has some special player powers, as well as will hold all of their buildings, because as they build more of these, they will unlock more types of income. There's also this magic system over here, which I'll explain, and variable player powers. There are five faction boards, which are all double-sided, so that there are ten different player powers uh, all in all. Players can also unlock more powers over the course of the game. So, how is the game played? Well, there are two player aids that come in this box. Odd choice. But there are, uh, to be fair, player aids for each of the individual factions that are very useful and very explanatory. However, here you're going to see, there's an income phase, then players will do actions, and then an end of the round phase. So the income phase, you're going to look at any gimme gimme hand symbols that you have here exposed on your player board. That's why it's really important to build more buildings to get better income. Uh, and you'll look at any other places where you might have some income. And you'll take that much money. If you uh, reveal this purple stuff here, that is magic movement. As you have more and more magic movement, you can move these uh, up here to the third bowl. Once these are fully charged up in bowl number three, they can be spent for special actions, which we'll explain later. Now let's take a look at the actions of the game, which is on the back side of the player aid card here, as we're doing the action phase. Players can make a space habitable and build. They have to spend money based on uh, trying to convert these different types of terrains into their preferred terrain, the sand cats, like the sand, baby. So you'd have to spend six bucks to terraform this one step and then four bucks to build this here. So that would cost a lot of money. Uh, anytime that you build next to other players, you're going to give them one magic movement. So the red player would take one of these as a bonus here. Why would you do that? Well, the next action is to upgrade. You have a little bonus if you upgrade adjacent to other players, uh, a, a little discount. So when you upgrade something, you take one of these ha uh, trading posts, replace a house. The house that you've built goes back onto your board, potentially covering up any income. Also, the red player would bonus magic movement. You can upgrade up to a trading post, and then from a trading post up to a, a temple or a palace or something. Uh, when you do that, you're going to unlock more income, as well as a special player power. So the Sand Cats are going to unlock different player powers from the rest of the factions. There are two of these that you can build, each revealing some sort of new special power. The next action, you can pay 8 bucks to increase your sailing. You want to have stronger sailing so that you can connect across different places along the river here. The river is not a buildable space, but instead if you have sailing, then you can make habitable and build across one hex or two or three hexes of river movement. If you had three, then you could go all the way down to this space. The next action is you can take a power action. Now that I've got this power charged up, as my action for my turn, I could spend some of this power to take one of these actions here. Now that I've done this, I would cover it up so no one else can do it this round, and I would get to do whatever that action bonus is for, uh, for free, paying any house building costs, of course, still, if I, if I do this action. Next up, you can build a bridge for 10 coins, a very pricey prospect here. But you can build a bridge across the hexes here as to connect networks. Well, why would you do that? Well, the reason you do is because as soon as you have seven strength of, connect, uh, of connected buildings, one strength, two strength, and three strength, depending on the size of the building, you as a free automatic action get to build up a city. 
once the city is built, you'll take one of these markers here, earn that number of points, and then you'll also get some sort of bonus, like maybe a bunch of magic movement. You can do special actions. Special actions are, short, are shown in this orangish hexagon or octagon. You would cover that up, and then you get to do whatever that bonus thing is, uh, as well as pay for any uh, adjoining bonuses along with it. And then you can choose to pass or drop out. This little bonus here, this income stick that you get, when you drop out, when you pass, you'll turn it back into the market and grab a new one, which will give you more different types of income or bonuses for the next round. Uh, as you do any of the things here that are shown on this uh, bonus income space, or this bonus marker for the current round, you'll earn points throughout, so every shovel that you do will earn you two points. And then that'll turn face down once everybody has passed, and you'll play round after round until the end of the game. You will score uh, three, or just, uh, three money becomes a point, and also you get to look for the biggest network of connected uh, or shipping-wise connected houses. And once you have that, then uh, whoever has the most gets 12 points, eight, and then four. There's a few different things here. Instead of having the first person become the first player, there is also a little uh, version here where you can drop out in order. So the first player to drop out becomes first player. The next person to drop out becomes second player for the next round. So on and so forth. There's a few different little variations here. There's a two-player specific side of the board that you can use where dummy player houses are going to come out over the course of the game as to give you little adjacency bonuses and to take up spots. Uh, that really, that's the game of, of Terra Nova. Now, I realize that some people watching this have not played Terra Mystica before, so, and I get that. And we'll come back to that in a second, but I do want to talk about our basic opinions on Terra Mystica slash, what's the... Gaia Project. Gaia Project, the space one. Um, I did not like Terra Mystica at, at all, actually. Um, I didn't hate it. I just thought this wasn't for me. There's a few things I didn't like about it. I didn't like the magic system. I didn't like the fact that you could really get screwed over by other players. Like you could just, if you're, yes, if you're an experienced player, it has that thing like fast um, food chain magnet other games have, where if you're not, if you come in and play against experienced players in Terra Mystica, you are going to get murdered. Yep. Especially if they're mean, because they can just cut you off and you're like, oh, 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 and you just feel stymied. Um, and there's just so much going on. Guy Project I liked more, and I don't know why. I mean, space, maybe? Space and more rules. There was more rules in it, but it also felt a little bit more freer. It was a little easier to spread out. I didn't feel as constrained, and that made a big difference for me. Yeah. Well, what did you guys think of those games? So I played Terra Mystica when I was early into hobby gaming, mm -hmm. and so I barely remember. I played it one time. It was a little bit much for me at that, t that, that time in life. Um, and so there's not much that I remember, other than I recognize that there are pieces, pieces that match. Did this bring back never, some memories when you played it? It did a little bit, yeah. It did a little bit, especially those like chunky building the, the things. Big the big the like build. square giant temple, yeah, those. Um, so, and the, the moving around the resource cubes and the shovels. Like I remember the purple those magic things, discs, uh, yeah, that stuff. Um, but then I never played Gaia Project, and I kind of don't know how that, ha like, how that happened. But I'd never played that. Because I'm not a huge fan of them. Yeah, and so, and so I, I never think that really, you, you yeah. didn't really. Push oh, you're not it. a big fan of Terra Mystica. No, it's good. It's 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 quite good, but it's not one that I feel drawn to. It feels like a. I like engine building. I like tracks. I like all those things, but it just feels like there are games that do tracks more interestingly. There are games that have that engine build and 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 uh, managing all those different types of resources more elegantly. Terra Mystica feels a little bit clunky for me. Oh, I, I can't wait to do this exciting action. Wait, I don't have a priest. Wait, I don't have enough magic pips. I don't wait. I don't have enough of this stuff. Uh, Gaia Project is more fun, I think, because you move up those tracks. This one's odd because it's missing a lot of those elements that are both kind of fun, but also kind of bog down the original game. I think. Oh my word! This is so streamlined. Yeah. You know, and in, in Terra Mystica. I might sit there and go, oh, I hope I can build one of the big buildings. Maybe. That's the way I felt anyway. I was like, oh, I hope I can get there. Here, I was like, I'm going to build them both. If, yeah. I, if I want to. I might not want to, but I I, I can do it. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the one thing I didn't like about Terra Mystica, the magic system, still here. I still hate it. I do not understand it. No one will ever explain to me why it's fun to do half steps. Like, move magic to here. What can I do with that? Nothing. Nothing. Move it to here. Now you may spend it. Or if you spend one, now suddenly that has to be upgraded too. I hate that system like. so much. But I just deal with it in this game. I just don't like that system. I know a lot of people love it. To me, it is such a 
such a drag. It's like I'm preparing to do something. But at least in this one, compared to Terra Mystica, you can move that magic around a whole lot more. The one thing this took out of Terra Mystica that I hate it was in Terra Mystica, they're like, destroy some of your magic so that you can move it around faster. And I'm like, that's so counterintuitive. Um, in this one, you don't have that option. You just move the magic around as fast as you can. Well, I kind of like that. It's like pulling a deck in a deck building game. Yeah, I get that, but it was also counterintuitive because I need the magic too. I, I, I just. Because you wanted bigger actions. With but then it. you can zip around those fewer discs. But this isn't a review of Anyways, Terra Mystica. This isn't about it is yeah. not, yeah. but I am talking about that magic thing. I'm saying they took out the coloring part, which I know some people like. And I, in fact, I'm going on a limb and say if you like Terra Mystica a lot, I don't think you'll like this. I really it's don't. It's very likely that you won't. No, and I, we jokingly said at the beginning, this is Terra Mystica for kids, this is for babies. It's really not. This is still a very strategic game, but I think the more that you go into it with that, uh, with any baggage, any expectation from Terra Mystica, the less you'll like it. I think that if you don't like Terra Mystica because it feels bogged down, this is so streamlined. For me... I really enjoy in games when you have that engine building of I build stuff out, I uncover new incomes, new resources, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy that. Um, Clans of Caledonia does it. Um, Boon Lake does it. Um, and so even though I haven't played Terra Mystica a bunch and I haven't played Gaia Project, like that is a generally mechanism that I really enjoy. This, I think, does it well, especially because as you're upgrading your buildings, you're putting stuff back on your board. And so you're giving up some to get others. Sure. And so I, I like that those decisions that you have to make. You're like, how much am I really, how much income am I really making from this move? If I build a little bit more buildings out, then I'm going to make more when I jump up. I don't know. Those those are good choices. I like that a I lot, like actually. It. And yeah. you could do a lot in this game. One thing we haven't mentioned, uh, the, just the, the asymmetrical, which was part of the original game, is Absolutely. still here. There's not as sure. much of it. They definitely cut down. I think there's ten different things you can play, something like that. Yeah, five boards, double sided, um, and and I noticed that even the incomes are different when you build uh, those basic buildings out. Oh my word, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And Based was, on the powers. Yeah, and I liked that, and I like that the powers really kind of play into different strategies, and you should play into that type of strategy. So that's the, that's where this game obviously is not just like a it's not just a newbie beginner game because you look at your faction and and the game says. Play to those strengths. Don't play just kind of whatever you want to. Play to the strengths of what you do. You're good at networking and getting a lot of stuff out there. You should do that because it will give you more power. Or, yeah. You know, uh, uh, build cities the, across rivers. I played the magic faction. I don't even. I don't know what they're called. The druids or something like that. And if you spread out and you have a lot of different colony city areas, you're getting a lot of those rotations on that little magic thing. Yes, and you in might fact, like that's. That. Well, no, I I like. Yes, uh, that's my favorite kind of faction stuff, yeah. because that takes away one of my problems I have with the game. Here's the thing, though. I like this game. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna say my rating now seven, so that we're not confused. I like it. I do wonder if we pulled back too far, and I say that because I am concerned as someone who likes medium heavy heavy medium games, which I think this is kind of in that category. I like these games a lot. I feel like. If I want to do almost everything on my board, I can. And I wish I had just a little bit more, like I could do this or this. And I feel like near, especially as the game gets to the end, I'm like, ooh, I can build this. I never felt much restriction at all, other than what the other players build upon me. And it also still has a couple things I'm not a big fan of, um, the magic system. And the other thing I'm not, I, I'll never get this, like, on this turn, if you do this, you get points. I'm like, fine, I'll do what you're telling me to do to get points. Build houses this turn, I'll do it. And I don't know why I dislike that. I just, I feel like the game is telling me what to do and I want more freedom. Um, but I but I still do enjoy this one a lot more. I like the idea of building, I like the idea of taking a big, a small building down and put a big building up. I like that the big buildings have special powers when they're there. Um, the theme is still whatever, you know. I don't know what faction I'm playing. I, I know I've spent these special abilities. And there's definitely interaction. I could, Chris, like, Chris was trying to build a city there. I'm going to shut that down. Chris is like, well, fine, then I'll build a boat. And it's still going to happen. Things like that. Yeah. Um, so this is about the lowest seven I can give a game. I, I know it sounds weird. Because I like it a lot, and I'll play it. I just was like, man, I wanted something that was a little more complex than this. Not too much more. I'm just probably not satisfied. Satisfiable, I guess. 
I have I have similar thing. similar complaints to you. I think that the the like pre setup tiles, I think that they bothered me more than they bothered you. I, I like that idea in general where you're like what, oh, pre setup you, tiles. The the points where it says like first round you get points if you build your castle. Or your temple. Oh, yeah. Is no. that what you were talking about? Yes, I, I just don't like yeah. that. Because you're telling me what to do each round. Yeah, I felt like I felt like it was... It made the game programmed a little bit. Because if I didn't do that, I didn't get those points, which means I'm not going to win. And so I felt like it definitely leaned towards certain, fa- certain factions a little bit more than others. Of if you... Depending on the order, if you're like, okay, I need to build lots of little buildings at the beginning. If you have one faction where they're very good at building those little buildings at the beginning, they're getting tons of points because that's their strategy. That's what they're trying to do. Whereas if you mix it up, then suddenly that faction is at a disadvantage because that's what they're trying to do. They're not trying to build build stuff at the beginning. So I feel like that kind of made the factions a little bit unbalanced in that sense. And I don't know if you guys felt that way. I don't know about how strong I feel, but I know that in regular Terra Mystica, the the upper level players yeah. will bid points to pick factions sure. because they know the factions because aren't equal. Read that's what I've up. heard. Yeah. I, that's a level that I'm not touching. Now I know that I spent all that time on that negatively, but I do really enjoy a lot of what's going on in this game. So I'm also going to give it a seven um, because I like the uncovering of the resources. I really enjoy that every round you get some sort of income bonus, but you get to pick that, and that you're you're trading that at, out every round. So you can't just spam the same thing. You can't just always get a benefit for building, or you always get a free shovel. I, I enjoy that little manipulation oh, that goes on with the little sticks I on the side. I love that part. Yeah, I think when that's you pass, super change cool. Change out the income stick thing, and they get worth What's more. What's the money other game that uses that them? arc? Um, the the magic Nova. one. No, the 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 Tom Lehman game where the, the magic. Res Arcana. Res Arcana does that. Yeah. Res, it's that same. That that's always fun because you're like, I love this bonus. I have to give it up. And I'm like, yes, give it up, because I want it. <laughs> I also think Feast for Odin with the tiles, put you put money on it as people don't take them, so they get worth more. Sure. I, I enjoy those kind of things. So, I yeah, I give this a 7, because there's a lot that I like about it. I'm giving this a 7.5. I'm kind of right around the same boat as you. I, I seem to like it a little bit more. Um, I would play this one over Terra Mystica, but that's just because I don't really love the original one that much. You know, I, I respect it a lot. It's fun, uh, but for me, this one is just a nice, fun engine build. It lasts the right amount of time. It's true. It's not it, very long. It's not very long. If it were one round longer, your board would be guaranteed emptied. You know, the first time I played it, I emptied my board, which was an odd feeling. I, I kind of agree with you. It feels like you kind of can do everything in this game just a bit. And that was with me focusing on those five predetermined scoring bonus tiles for each round. I like that. I think I like that more than you, maybe, which is why I, uh, this is game This game is bumped up a bit compared to that. I enjoy how do I maximize my faction ability with what the those scoring bonuses are. Because if I ignore those, I will not win. But at the end of the day, as, as much fun as I have with this, and I would be willing to teach it and play with some other people, uh, it's not one that's going to be in the upper echelon of my mid-weight, mid-to-heavyweight Euro games. All right. Well, there you go. That's Terra Nova. I, one last thing I'll say. I do think if you're, like, worried about playing Terra Mystica and you were like, I would like to play a tutorial, I honestly think you could play this first. And then if someone taught you Terra Mystica, you'd be like, I already know half the mechanisms. Absolutely. This is true. A great, that's true. That's, that's, a, that's an odd thing, but you could do stone. that with yeah. this for sure. Yeah, this is like a tutorial game. You're absolutely right with that. Anyway, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Wendy Yee. I'm Chris Yee. Have fun rotating magic. I hate that mechanism so much.